Hey guys, what's going on? Steve, I'm back again, and I'm back with another Walking Dead video from the Thrifty Typewriter. So I'm continuing on with his retrospective series, going back through each of the seasons and just looking back at it, you know, the things they did right, things they could have done better, things maybe they've played a little bit too soon and should have held off on, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a blast just going back through each season. You know, so this one here is season five, which he calls the golden era, which I do agree with. Last one I did was obviously season four, which he titled the beginning of the golden era. I was kind of torn on that one. You know, I kind of thought maybe season three was the beginning of the golden era, you know, because that's when we went to the prison and stuff like that. That's when we first encountered our first real major villain. You know, yeah, you can, like I said before, you can count Shane as a villain-ish, but I mean, he wasn't a threat to, you know, everybody else in the group. More so just a threat really against Rick. But that's when we first encountered the governor, when he was a threat to everyone. You know, we also had uh, the prison, the prisoners, you know? Um, so I don't know, I, I'm kind of kind of torn on you know his season three season four when the beginning of the golden era started so you know um like i said let me know what you guys think do you think season three was the beginning of the golden era or do you think it was season four but either way season five the golden era totally agree you know that's when we had no sanctuary uh which i kind of um I don't know, I kind of thought, um, like, Terminus and stuff would kind of play out a little bit longer. I mean, yes, the termites, whatever you want to call them, yes, they did play out longer, but I thought Terminus was going to play out longer, because, um, it, it seemed like a very interesting place. Um, uh, what was it? I think it was, um... Was it the end of... I think it was the end of last season. Yeah, it was the end of end of season four when they were, um, you know, trying to run away from them and, you know, they were, like, shooting at the ground and stuff like that to corral them to go to a certain area. And one of the areas they ran through, I think it was, like, a... What was it? Like, a gymnasium or something like that? And it looked like there was, like, satanic cult worshipping symbols and stuff like that. It's where um uh it, it it's the same room that I believe in this episode here Carol kills um the woman who's like let's make you a plate, you know. Uh you know and that seemed just very interesting like oh okay, we got like some like demon worshipping devil worshipping cult that that sounds kind of interesting and stuff, but um yeah, Terminus didn't uh, didn't last very long, but I don't know, kind of a shame. Yeah, like I said, the termites did, you know, but still, um, I don't know, just would have been interesting to explore Terminus a little bit more, but it is what it is. Still, great season beginning, awesome start to a season. So, yeah, let's uh, let's jump right into season five, the Golden Era. Here we go. While I've been doing this series, I've been seeing a lot of comments that have a problem with the title of my last video on season four about how it's the start of the golden era because <laughs> some people think the prison was the best era and the show went downhill from there. Well, I can tell you from the ratings no. of the show, no, I don't viewership agree. numbers, and most importantly, my own opinion, that you're wrong for thinking that. Because guess what? We're on to season five and what I consider to be the golden era of the Which show. Which I agree. For a lot of people, season five is the definitive season of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. It has the highest highs, oh, yeah. some of the best episodes of the series, mm -hmm. and it's generally considered to be either the oh. best or one of the best seasons to the audience. Yeah. So when I was rewatching this season, I was incredibly excited excited because I'm of the opinion that the season is definitely oh, one of the best, Rick. but I was also a bit taken back because while the season is home to some of the best episodes of the series, mm -hmm. it was also when I started to notice the cracks in the foundation. 
cracks that would eventually split open and let the show become what it's now known for, a literal zombie of its former glory. It made me think twice about this actually being the golden era. Hmm. Were the comments okay. about the prison being the best actually right? No, no, they, they can't be. This season is so great, but also not? To get to the bottom of this, okay. I took extensive notes on this season because I'm going to be going over why this season is the golden era of The Walking Dead, but also not as great as I remember. So let's get right into my thoughts on The Walking Dead Season 5. That was one hell of a beginning. Didn't see that coming. So I'm not the only one that thought season 3 was the beginning of the golden era. So the first thing I obviously have to bring up about this season is the trailer. Because back in the day, The Walking Dead would always get these special extended Comic-Con trailers. Yeah, and like it really five started minutes. with season 4, but this season they didn't want to spoil how giant the first episode was going to be. So they, well... Join us. Yep. You go Massive misdirection. And cure Massive. Let's just say they didn't tell the audience the truth about what was going to happen this season. No. Liar. <laughs> I made a whole video about this trailer and a couple from the other seasons. Yeah, I gotta see But this see trailer that video. really went out of its way, so that way it wouldn't spoil anything for the premiere. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worked out in its favor, because not only is the premiere one of the three highest rated episodes of the show that are all tied for first, but this... Ooh, that was, what, too far gone? No sanctuary and... Oh, no way out. Yeah. 9.6, 9.6, 9.6. Okay. Three-way tie for uh, season premiere. For the show, okay. they're all tied for first, but this premiere episode was also yeah. the most watched episode in the history of the show. Yep. Yes, even above the first episode of season seven. And it's really? for good reason that so many people watched I knew this they were episode close, and it's but, rated uh, so highly because this episode okay. is phenomenal. I still think it's crazy just how far they go in the oh, opening yeah. minutes. It's a bit jarring when you're binge watching it coming from season four, when yep. everything about Terminus was kind of teased. Yep. But in the first couple minutes, they go full on. They don't pull any punches no. in what is definitely up there with some of the darkest scenes in the entire show. But I think what is so great about this with episode the and is how there hasn't been a premiere yeah. of this level before, both in this show and I'd say most other shows out there. When you compare it to the season opener of the season before, there is a clear winner. Most season openers are in charge of setting up the story of the season, whereas this one was in charge of mostly ending the storyline that was set up in the previous <laughs> season. Kind of a weird choice. I'm <laughs> sure it won't be a decision they make again in the future in order to kind of replicate the results of this episode. This episode is almost like if Too Far Gone was the premiere of season four. Sure, they just handled the governor, but what if after a time skip he came back and the opener was just the prison getting destroyed? We have no clue where they're going from there because it's such a wild card of an episode, and especially an episode to open the season on. That's exactly what No Sanctuary is. This episode highlights Carol in a number of ways. We obviously mm -hmm. see what she's capable of doing, but there's also a callback to the episode where she was last with the entire group because this guy is in the lineup at yep. the trough. I think his inclusion in this episode was there to remind Rick of the last time he saw Carol, back when he had oh, yeah. things under control yep. and made the decision to leave her behind. So for Carol to save Rick and everybody else and for him to ask for her forgiveness, just shows how far both of these characters have come since the last time they saw each other. Yep. So yeah, it seemed that Terminus was dealt with after a single episode. The trailer straight up lied to us, so where do we go from here? Well, from here, we get the entire group together, and this is, far and away, the greatest version of the group that the show ever gave us. Yeah. While I have some issues with the upcoming storyline, mm -hmm. this group on yeah. the screen, their dynamics, their conversations, Abraham. it makes everything worth it. Eugene. On this watch, I found myself caring about each and every character. Sure, sometimes they don't do much, or the writers come up with some storylines that seem a little bit contrived, and like they're just adding in stories for characters to give them something to do, but compared to the groups of the later seasons, each of these characters are just so great to watch. Even the lower tier characters like Rosita, Gabriel, and Eugene end up becoming prominent characters in the future, yep. and it's cool to see their origins, especially for Father Gabriel. Sasha sometimes this was is also a bit the annoying, season that Rick Grimes, 
became the best character in the show. And oh, I know yeah. that sounds weird to say with him being the protagonist and all, but season five, Rick took absolutely zero risks. He didn't <laughs> care about who you were, <laughs> no. if he did any harm to his family, if you if were he's wearing even that a threat jacket. to his family, he took you out. He's almost kind of similar to another character now. And speaking of Father Gabriel, he gives off all kinds of red flags after everything the group has been through. This is heightened by the white cross on the car that took Beth and him being a priest. I mentioned this before and a lot of people were like, oh yeah, I never made that connection. But that was the first thing I thought of when I saw a priest and especially the car a few episodes later. He seems to be guilty of something, which he is, but fresh off the heels of Terminus, we think there's something far more sinister up his sleeves. This is part of the reason why Four Walls and a Roof is such an excellent episode. We learn more about Gabriel's backstory and how he really is just a guy that's lucky to survive as long as he has. And then we get the conclusion to the termites, see yep. their full intentions, and see Rick follow through on a promise he made to Gary. <laughs> it ends a I phenomenally a paced first three episodes, but this also spelled kind of trouble because the storyline that had been marketed to keep people around was now completely over, which leads me to the True. Beth portion of the story. Oh, I have yeah. a lot to say about the Beth storyline, but let's go over the good stuff first. Kinda, yeah, I think there weak. being remnants of a police force trying to maintain their past lives, but also taking advantage of their power is a really great plot line on yeah. paper. Beth is an interesting character to be given a full storyline for herself, and I mean that in two different ways. She hasn't been given a ton of spotlight in the past, so now At least she was giving the time as any to, to promote her. But that's also interesting because Beth, of all characters, gets put in the spotlight. She gets an entire episode by herself, and when you consider characters like Glenn, Maggie, Michonne, and even Daryl to an extent, haven't been given episodes where they're the sole focus, it's just a little bit strange. This felt like the beginning of Beth being given the prominent main character billing in the opening credits, but we all know that's not exactly what happened. So let's go over the bad. Beth wasn't given a bigger role, we spend three episodes looking for her just for her to die when we get to her, making this whole plotline feel like a complete dead end. Did it impact other characters and further their development? Yeah. Not really. Maggie oh, asked yeah. about her sister once oh, off yeah, that's screen. True. She's alive. She's alive. And Daryl oh, gave it. an incredibly sad response to her death, but after Coda and like a few episodes later, Beth is never mentioned again. This whole storyline is just a dead end and signified a bigger problem with The Walking Dead, and that's yeah, the that need to have shocking deaths. The last mid-season finale ended with a shocking death, so this one yep. must have that too. But the shocking death in Too Far Gone wasn't the point of the episode, it was the loss of the prison. The point of Coda was and is Beth's death. And I guess the group having to go back out on the road again? But why? It would be one thing if Noah became an irreplaceable character of the group who would go on to help them in ways that nobody else could, right. but that's also not what happens because Noah dies this season too. Yeah. Outside of a few questionable character arcs like Lori and Andrea, this was the first plotline in the show that truly didn't feel like it was necessary. It was a troubling sign of things to come back when the show truly felt untouchable and had everybody on their heels week after week. I like how the group splits back up after the whole Terminus debacle is dealt with. I like there Jeez, being that multiple look different storylines going on at once, but this was also the start of another bad trend. Having so many different storylines at once with only one story per episode. Sure, they also did this mm -hmm. in the back half of season four, so I guess right. it actually started there. But I don't know, I liked those episodes and how it was done, but one thing is true regardless of when it started, this is a story pacing killer. End of the third episode, there's a cliffhanger of Daryl. Yeah, because you like your favorite characters and you don't want to wait two weeks, three weeks, however long, to see what happens to that character. It's like, oh man, you know, what happened to Rick? Oh, next week is Glenn and Maggie's episode. After that is like Daryl and Carol's episode. And then we'll get back to Rick. It's like, well, great, I gotta wait like three weeks to see what's going on with Rick. It's like, a, you know cool, you know, don't care about, like, the other characters, I want to see what's going on with Rick. Ugh, 
You know, something they really did in season seven. Coming back to the church with some mystery character. Next week, we get to see Beth with another cliffhanger. Week after that, we see the group that's going to Washington. Yep. And the week after that, we're finally back with Daryl. Yep. But it takes the whole episode for us to see the resolution to the cliffhanger that was set up three weeks prior. This also meant that four weeks would go by without seeing the main character of the show. Now I know a lot of people don't have that issue now because the show is streaming everywhere. But the show did come out week to week, and this momentum killer style of formatting was, in my opinion, what truly led to the show's... Stuff like that, that's why I, I just wait for, at this point, like shows to just be over, and then I'll just go and binge watch it. You know, like Walking Dead was the only one, like, I gotta see what happens next, what happens next, what happens next, you know? Um, but yeah, all other shows like Game of Thrones, um, House of the Dragon, stuff like that, you know, I didn't even watch season two until it was done, and I just went, and season one, season two, went right through, you know? None of this, you know, waiting anymore, and, you know, huh, gotta wait till next week, gotta wait till the week after, nope, nope. And now I'm sure uh, going back and watching The Walking Dead, a lot better. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, like, I don't know, maybe some of the older, you know, other seasons, like maybe season seven gets a little bit, I mean, yeah, sure, season seven, you know, did suck story-wise and stuff like that, but I don't know, maybe you get like a few more points because now you can stream it and just binge watch it instead of just watching one episode a week to see this character, these two characters, and stuff like that, you know, nope, you can do it in, like, three hours, you know, it is what it is now. It's eventual downfall, and these problems were relevant way back in the golden era of the show, in a season that is a lot of people's favorite. Abraham's backstory is one of the most tragic in the entirety of the show, and doesn't really get brought up enough. He saves his family, but they're so scared I'd love to of see him a that show they abandon him, and then he Abraham's finds Eugene, backstory. who tells more him that he can save the world, so Just Abraham makes this quest his whole personality so that way he can forget the mistakes and the horror of his past. Mix all this together with a character who has the greatest one-liners and really leans into his corniness, <laughs> yeah, he does. and you have one of the best characters in The Walking Dead. Glenn has always been the level-headed character, he's the only one who can get Rick and Abraham to stop fighting, and he's really there for everybody no matter what. But as for Glenn and Maggie together, in the first half of the season, they're really kind of just there. They obviously have some badass scenes and good moments together, but this was a trend that would somewhat continue. One of them would have a storyline while the other one didn't, and then vice versa, but I don't think either one of them really had a standout storyline during these prime seasons. A lot of their lines come from the unlikely pairing conversations that they have with other group members, or just nice and sweet conversations with each other, but they don't really have anything that makes them stick out. Eugene's lie, and really the build-up of it since the minute he's introduced, is really well done. There's yeah, so is. many different hints and clues to what he's truly trying to do, mm -hmm. and it seems really obvious the second time around. I'm not too sure if the first time around I just wasn't as good as picking up on these things, but I didn't realize it. The reveal yeah, just absolutely and, yeah. breaks Abraham, and the whole episode is really great. In the episode Consumed, we get to see a lot of Carol flashbacks, some of them from well over a season ago, in locations that The Walking Dead rarely ever revisits, flashbacks or not. This episode also shows us how far the Daryl and Carol friendship has come. They have the reunion in the first episode, their back and forth is incredible, and I also thought that maybe these two could have a romantic moment or two. But ultimately, Daryl doesn't end up with Carol, or Beth, or Connie, or anybody that he's been shipped with, and I think there's something great about a manly man like Daryl, who's ultimately just a soft teddy bear, and is able to have friendships with women without it getting romantic. I like that. Rick and Michonne really are already a team. She talks to Rick like a partner while everybody else talks to him like he's their boss. She's really the only yeah, one who true. can level his head, but she also supports Rick every step of the way. While their dynamic changes over the next couple seasons, the core of their relationship is their friendship and teamwork, and that's something that's very present here and has been present for like a whole season now. So back to Coda. 
that episode is the most disappointing episode for me of the entire series. Mm, it was the yeah. first time the show chose shock value over good storytelling. It also doesn't make any narrative sense. They were trying to give Dawn this, like, redemption arc, saying she wants to change this place, name Beth as her successor, and for all this development, five episodes of it, to end it with Dawn killing Beth, and even Beth trying to kill Dawn, it doesn't make any sense. Is all of their development for the sake of misdirection? I guess, because otherwise it's just bad writing. It feels like two different drafts of scripts with different storylines spliced together. It also ends this half of the season on not only a bummer of a note, but a pretty directionless future. I have an analysis of this episode, but people always like to claim that this is a world where anything can happen. But let sure. me remind you, this show is a drama first. This isn't some ultra-realistic apocalypse. Oh, right. Characters wear skinny jeans, they never have to go to the bathroom, they have perfectly white teeth. <laughs> it's a drama with a ton of good-looking people. It's okay to prioritize the dramatic storytelling over the survival aspects, because this show hate to break it to you, is a drama first. Right. I always say storytelling is built on coincidence, and people don't really know what I mean by that, so let's go over some examples from this show. Actually, just this season. Morgan finding a paper that has Rick's name on it? Coincidence. Carol finding and saving the group at the exact moment that they're going to be killed? Coincidence. Daryl and Carol meeting Noah, who knows Beth? Coincidence. The fire truck arriving the second the walkers are going to get out of the church? Coincidence. This group arriving at the hospital right as the other group is bringing Beth out? Coincidence. This show, every show, every movie, every story is filled with coincidences. The only way I'd revise this statement is if it was like storytelling is built on luck. Because a lot of coincidence and luck do overlap, especially in this show, and there are far more circumstances where the characters are lucky. What happens and what's going on is obviously another really controversial episode. It's also a very strange episode for a mid-season premiere. I remember thinking back when this even came out, I was like, the people who binge this series are going to see Beth's death and then Tyrese's death in back-to-back yeah, episodes. That was strange. And it's going to be Two quite a downer, and I was correct. My girlfriend said something about how depressing this season has been after watching this episode. But I think the group arriving at the Shire Wilt Estates is a really cool nod to the comics, and I really felt for Noah here. Imagine being away from your family and friends, just thinking every day about getting back to them, just for the place to be completely destroyed. Also, hot take here, but Tyrese this time around is a much less likable character than I remember. Tyrese's whole character is talking about how he lost Karen, and how it impacted him. This would be one thing if we cared about Karen, or even Tyrese and Karen, but we saw their relationship right, in season four all, really. for one episode, and that was his entire personality afterwards. It doesn't do a great job at making me care for him. Also, he knew Karen for what, like a month? A, a couple months tops? It doesn't make for a compelling character because I didn't care about the relationship, it wasn't built up enough. Also, if she's so it's important, why isn't she character. in this episode? He's seeing a bunch of important oh, yeah, dead figures, even the governor for some reason, but not Karen. That being said, I do like Tyrese's yeah, death true. in this episode. I actually wish that we got more main character deaths from walkers. It's by far the most likely death in this world, and even if we got some sort of like copycat episodes like this, with cameos from previous people, a very artistic style of filming and pacing, I'd be fine with it because this is a great episode. I suppose Rick's last episode kind of took the template from this episode, but that was more of a special occasion. Right. This is also an important episode to show us just how vital it is for our group to find a home. The episode, Them, shows us our group at the lowest they've ever been. They have to eat dogs, they walk at a literal snail's pace because they're so devoid of energy, and, they walk with the and dead. this episode in particular focuses on three characters, that being Maggie, Daryl, and Sasha, aka the people who have lost the most recently. This episode is exhausting. You can feel just how beat down these characters are, and these three characters in particular have every reason to give up, but they don't. Rick also has his famous line, That we are the, are the walking, walking dead. dead. 
He said it! He said it! And we get a nice cliffhanger ending where some random guy comes up to them and says he wants to help. Oh boy. Good guy, The Aaron. whole Aaron plotline is excellent. Mm -hmm. We as an audience have been conditioned to not trust the people in this world, and Aaron comes across as somebody mm -hmm. who's too good to be true in this world. So we're right there with Rick and his mindset. Aaron does come across as strangely untrustworthy, which is odd, because watching it with a new mindset and knowing who Aaron is, you see things differently, but I'm watching this show with my girlfriend, who's never seen it before, and as soon as Aaron popped on screen and knew all about the group, she said that they should just kill him right away. Yeah, she didn't trust him little, whatsoever, and it's truly suspicious. been an amazing experience watching it with her, because that was everything I thought the first time, too. There are so many... And it's the perfect thing for the, um, if it was to be a villainous group, you know, you're not going to send out some rugged looking, you know, hey, come join my group and stuff like that. It was all like scraggly and stuff like that. No, send out a clean shaven, nice guy, you know, yeah, I got a place, you know, it's safe and we got walls and stuff like that, you know, that's what you do, you know. Would you trust, you know, a big scraggly looking, you know, shifty looking dude, you know? Yeah, we got a place, we got a place back there, it's safe, you know? Or would you trust, you know, hi, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, I got some food for you, you know, come with me. Many red flags raised, he doesn't tell them the whole truth about Alexandria, there's no pictures of the people, and Aaron ultimately seems too friendly. Exactly. Episode 11 is all about wanting us to feel anxious and afraid of what could happen, because for a whole technical season of the show, mm -hmm. almost nothing good has happened to our group. It's but all this all bad changes people. when we see Aaron with Eric. For the first time in a long time, our group has hope, and Rick's expression when they arrive says everything. He couldn't hear anything when they were outside of Terminus, but he can hear, and as they enter Alexandria, we enter a whole new era of The Walking Dead, the modern drama era. Entering Alexandria is so jarring in the best possible way. Even just seeing normal people and normal houses feels so outside of The Walking Dead. We center mostly on Rick and Carl and their struggle to cope under these normal conditions in this episode. Yep. Rick loses sight of everybody for like two seconds, has a full-on panic attack. Carl's hanging out with teenagers oh, I, and doing normal imagine. teenage things, After being with these people which for must be so strange long? for him because the you last know? time things were normal, he was probably like eight years old playing with toys. Their struggle to adapt to this new situation is what makes this episode and these next couple episodes so great. I love the interviews and hearing everybody's perspective on this place, how the group stays together at night, and how this episode was basically framed as if Rick or somebody is going to find some sort of crack in the system. And while there's flaws, there's never that big twist that any of them are expecting. This place is truly as it's advertised, which brings on a whole new set of problems. Now I'm going to talk about Carol again. We know Carol is a complete badass by now, we know everything she's been through, and the storyline the writers came up for her is incredible. Yeah, it is. Remember, Carol wasn't around at this point in the comics, so they chose to have Carol play dumb and act like she didn't single-handedly take out an entire community and save the whole group. I love this decision for her <laughs> character, and it eventually makes for one of the best episodes in the series. <laughs> now, the amount of characters that they have to show and it's introduce and develop definitely becomes a balancing <laughs> act. When they were on the road, it was less of an issue, but the introduction to Alexandria and so many new characters having to be introduced and share the screen time means that a lot of people are shoved to the side. Yeah. There were many times where I'll just Gotta forget make about a new character characters. until they're on screen again, and then I'm like, wait a minute, where have you been this whole time? Spend is a really great episode, kinda. It raises the stakes and kind of brings us back to reality a little bit because of how well everything was going for the past couple episodes. We get to see just how different our group is from the Alexandrians, and yep, now that the, the dust has settled, been doing and their we see own very things. clearly that the Alexandrians' way of doing things just gets people killed, and it won't work. Yep. But just like with Beth's death. 
this episode needed a character to sacrifice, so let's start giving somebody a character arc, Noah asking Reg about how to build up the walls, and then let's kill them off. This is the same recipe that the show uses again, and again, and again, and again, and all of that started in this season. With the final two episodes, I have a really in-depth episode analysis on it, but oh, I love okay. the dynamic that Rick and Carol have and why they're so invested why in the problems the with the Anderson finale? family. Carol has a past history with abuse, Rick has feelings for Jesse, and I think everything about this confrontation is great. Rick talks about the broken window theory and how if the windows stay intact, then everything is fine, and of course, when the windows are broken, <laughs> everything collapses. Does it feel like ah, a didn't even think typical storyline that we'd see out of most other drama shows? Yes, it does. But I think that this show elevates it because of how many different layers there are to this situation and this world. I've also gone in depth about this topic before, but there are a ton of parallels this season between who Rick Grimes is now and who Shane was back in season two. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear a more in-depth explanation on that, check out one of the two videos in the top right corner of the video. The season finale is very small scale in comparison to a lot of the other season finales or yeah, even mid-season finales, but I think it's very character-focused and has a lot of different point of views that mix together very well. Right. It's a great paced episode, the plot lines are the built up suspensefully, in, and it all wolves. comes to a head. We also get a very anticipated reunion between Rick and Morgan, yep. and I love all of Morgan's scenes and glimpses throughout the season. This is a great cliffhanger to end the season on, where we're given Rick a lot of new someone. questions about how things will play out, but it ends the story it was telling for this season. I hope that all future cliffhangers will be just as good as this one, but I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. So is Season 5 still the golden era of The Walking Dead, yeah. or is it not as good as I remember it to be? I've been thinking about that question ever since I was making this video and watching the show again, and I still I don't really have a good answer. In some ways, I was really disappointed with this season, and with how some of the storylines played out, but then I think back to the first three episodes, everything happening in Alexandria, mm -hmm. the Rick and Shane parallels, and how yep. this is some of my favorite Walking Dead it was just the, the best entire stuff series. That just made a but week. this is also undeniably where the writers started struggling. Things didn't play out to a satisfying degree sometimes. There were questionable character choices and deaths, and the pacing in the first half of the season was what eventually would go on to kill the show. But there's a big difference between this season and the later seasons that have all these issues, and that's the simple fact that I care about these characters. Right. I cared about the stuff they were going through, how the situations around them changed them as people, and I have a lot of nostalgia and love for this era of the series when it was on TV. So overall, yeah, lots of great I'm going to give this season of the show a 9 out of 10. Let me know your rating in the comments below, and yeah. also your thoughts on this season in general. Make sure to subscribe to see the continuation of the series every month of the year. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Okay, so there we go. There was uh, Season 5, The Golden Era. Yeah, I definitely, um, you know, I definitely think it still was one of the better best seasons of the show you know yeah uh the the best stuff was uh pretty weak and stuff like that but um you know overall it was still a really good season yes there was like flaws and stuff like that um you know characters getting pushed aside you know the back-to-back -back deaths was kind of eh, you know because it was like wow we just had you know one character die and now we got another character dying one episode apart not even an episode apart you know a following episode um ugh, you know poor tyrese too tyrese was a pretty good character you know but yeah i agree you know they didn't uh in his i don't know hallucinations and stuff like she wasn't even there like governor was but i mean i guess i don't know he had some dialogue and stuff like that uh, then, you know, meeting good guy Aaron and stuff like that for the first time after everything they've been through. And it's like, all right, this seems too good to be true. You know, it seems a little suspicious. Um, you know, going to Alexandria and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think it was overall a, a, you know, really good season. Like I said, I think there is... Um, 
probably like two I'd like to see like ratings for the show one like one if there was a if there was only a way to do it like all right what would you you know rate this season when it, you know well we already got the rating you know when the show aired and stuff like that but like a way to break it up to be like all right this was the rating of the episode or the whole season when it was on week by week by week what would be the rating of the show when you can binge watch the whole thing you don't have to wait a week to see what happens next or or what happens to like all these different characters and stuff like that like oh man like uh, what do you say in the uh, in the beginning and stuff like that it took three weeks to get back to rick you know cool you can do that in like three hours you know three hours three weeks way different you know so I'm, i'd be very curious to see you know what the different ratings um would that you know uh, would be for something like that because I think um, obviously binge watching the show would definitely change you know would probably improve you know like um, the, the 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 review rating of um, you know of the season stuff like that you know as compared to back then but uh, yeah overall you know I think it was still a really good um you know a really good season overall we had a lot of uh really good stuff you know the opening episode although the back-to-back -back desk was a little eh you know um the whole thing with beth you know didn't really go anywhere and stuff like that uh yeah there was some flaws with tyrese's death um noah you know um you know it is what it is but overall um yeah i agree i think this was a uh great season so yeah all right so anyways there we go there is season five the golden era i had no idea about his little intro there when you know people saying like the beginning of uh, season three was the start of the golden era and season four was the start of the golden era so i didn't see that coming that was kind of kind of cool so i'm not alone so apparently there's other people out there that think that uh, season three was the start of the golden era. So, yeah, let me know. But, yeah, this is a great um, series, you know. So can't wait for, uh, you know, episode six. I mean, uh, season six. Oh, there we go. The Walking Dead season six, the best season of The Walking Dead okay yeah season six. Oh man what did we have uh oh we had the wolves yeah was it yeah was that the wolves yeah no yeah yeah because they were yeah because they were doing the um uh uh the walker parade and stuff like that from um like the canyon or something like that yep okay uh the wolves attacking uh that was really good uh god what else happened in that um what else happened in that uh yeah that's when we met uh what hilltop and stuff like that and jesus um god it's been a while uh what else happened in season six uh yeah that was the start of uh the whole negan stuff uh and then of course um hmm. Hmm. season finale mm. yeah so I am looking forward to that uh, that video as well. So sometime next week, should be doing that one. But man, these are a blast. These are so much fun. But anyways, there we go. There's the video. Let me know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about season five? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, do you think it is, you know, the golden era? Um, you know, what do you think about uh, the Beth stuff? What do you think about the back-to-back -back deaths with Beth and then Tyrese? Uh, and then, of course, having also Noah die also this season. Um, you know, just, just let me know all your thoughts and comments. So uh, other than that, uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. That'd be awesome. Remember, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. Links in the description box below. And other than that, um, yeah, just stick around. More videos are on the way. And I will see you guys next time.